Uh, greetings, amigos and gringos. I'm going to say it again. The Macedonian question is about human rights, the right to self-determine. And if you, Arvaniti, Vlasi, whatever, whatever else you were who came across from Asia Minor, whatever else you are, if you have the right to self-identify with a nation and with a name that you're only recently related to, then we Macedonians certainly have the right. But, you know, I said I wouldn't talk about history, but that's all you really want to hear. And that's why you all go back to uh, 2,300 years ago, because you want to hide the colonial era crimes that you did to us Macedonian people during the uh, 19th and 20th century. But I wanted to go back to that era, 2,300, and see exactly who the ancient Macedonians were, not according to you uh, modern wannabe Hellenes, not, not according to the Western 19th century deluded historians who didn't know anything about history other than what they'd read in Greek and Roman sources. No. I want to see what the people of those times thought of the Macedonians. So I want to, I want to first have a look. Who are those Greeks of ancient times? And why didn't they allow the Macedonians to be part of their world? And, I, and, I, and, and that's the fact. That's a fact that you guys refuse to acknowledge. So I have to bring up a few points to you. Firstly, I googled because, you know, I've read Homer and uh, it's a great story, obviously. I've read Homer, but I wanted to Google and make sure. So I did and I googled and guess what, folks? There were no Macedonians who went to rescue the poor fair maiden Helen from those terrible Trojans. All the other Hellenic tribes are there, but no Macedonians are mentioned. Why is that? If the Macedonians part of the Greek era for 3,000 years, and that's when uh, uh, apparently the Trojan War was, 1,000 BC, why weren't the Macedonians part of the ex expedition? But, folks, guess what? There were people from Macedonia who fought in the Trojan War, and they fought on the side of the Trojans. They were called the Brigi. When they, when they eventually migrated to Asia Minor, they were called the Phrygians. Now, the Phrygians is where Alexander cuts the knot, the Cordian knot. The town was called Gordium. Could just as easily be Gradium. So they opened, they opened their gates to Alexander and welcomed him as a neighbor and seemed to be able to converse with him in their language. Now let's have a look at some more ancient history. Now I want to talk about the colonies, Greek colonies. Now Greek colonies, there's about 10 of them in Macedonia. Where else in Greece are there Greek colonies? In fact, folks, all the city-states of Greece, maybe they were all colonies from someone else. However, the Greek colonies uh, throughout the Mediterranean, they were also established in Macedonia, not, not in uh, Attica, uh, not in the Peloponnese. They were established in Macedonia. Greek colonies from the 6th century on established in Macedonia. What the hell would you need Greek colonies on if it was already Greek? And why did Philip, the first thing that he did was smash them? If he loved them so much, why did he smash them? Why didn't they open the door to him and say, yeah, Philip, we want to be part of the unification of Greece. But no, they didn't want to be part of any unification with Macedonia because they knew who the Macedonians were. Unlike you wannabes today, you have no clue who the Macedonians are. You don't even know who yourself you are. The other great thing is, you know, they keep talking about the Olympic Games being the defining factor. If you were invited to the Olympic Games, you were a Hellene. Well, guess what? The Macedonians weren't invited to the Olympic Games. You all make a big show about Alexander the first or the second, whoever he was, the so-called Phil Hellene. 
You all make a big show about him coming down after, uh, after the Pelop one of the, the Persian wars, the invasions, coming back down and telling you he's, he's Greek too. Now it's uh, debatable whether this ever happened, it could be just a myth, but if it was a myth, then he was talking about his mythological ancestors who may have been Greek or who may have been pre-Hellenic and just become adopted by the Greeks. But it's not even... It's, it's, it's not even <coughs> conclusive that he was accepted. That's the funny part about it. But even more importantly, the Macedonians weren't accepted. So if he was a king, a non-Macedonian king, like uh, Otto, uh, like uh, the current king of Greece, they're not, they're, they're not Hellenes. So if it was that type of king, a king ruling over uh, a people who were, he was not part of, that's another question, but that's debatable too. In fact, that Alexander the Philhellene story is most likely a lie that you guys cling to. And another thing, folks, you know that Herodotus and who's the other guy, all these Thucydides, when they speak about the Macedonians, all they say is the Macedonians are barbarians whose kings claim to be Hellenes. And everyone could be a Hellene in those days if they were royal, because being a Hellene in that part of the world was very prestigious. But were they Hellenes? I don't think so. And maybe they might have started off as Hellenes, but they ended up as Macedonians. Now you also talk about the Macedonian language. There's enough evidence to prove to you guys that the Macedonian language the, the, the 200 words that we have of, of the Macedonian language, other than the loan words, you know they're not Greek. You can't fit them into the Greek narrative. And uh, at the tribe of Philotus, when Philotus decides to speak in, in Greek, and Alexander calls him out and says, hey, don't you want to speak in Macedonian? Isn't speaking Macedonian good enough for you? What does he say? He says, I want everyone to understand because at that time there were non-Macedonians still in his army. And Greek being a prestigious, important language because of the colonialization process of, of setting up Greek states, Greek city-states throughout the Mediterranean, a bit like English today. So how, how can all the people of those days say that the Macedonians were not Greek and you guys these days insist that they are Greek? And by the time when Alexander comes along, have you heard of a guy called Isocrates? Re? Do you know who he is in Malacca's? What did he say? He said it's these days, being Greek is nonsensical. It's got nothing to do with uh, ethnicity and DNA. In his time, being Greek, he said, all being Greek should be is if you speak the language and uh, practice the Greek culture, believe in the Greek gods. Ah, Greek gods. Tell me, folks, why did Macedonians have other gods, not just their Greek gods? And another thing. Why did Macedonians have their own months of the year? Why couldn't they just use the Hellenic ones? Hey, I've got no problem with you guys calling yourself Greeks today. Yeah? That's a human rights issue. That's something that we Macedonians do not deny anyone. In fact, in the Republic of Macedonia, which you want to destroy, were the best, absolutely the best minority rights of any country in the world. And it's not me talking, it's my friend who is a Roma from, from Macedonia who told me, he said, where else do the Roma have rights that the Macedonian Roma have? Nowhere. Whereas you Greeks, wannabe Greeks, despite your eth various ethnicities, First you stuffed up yourselves, then you came and stuffed up us, and you're still living in a delusion, a Greek delusion, despite the fact that the history of the, of the ancient people 
still hasn't been told properly. And then when it's told, your narrative will be totally destroyed. The 19th century Germanic and British Philhellenic delusion will die.